We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Bad Comic Review, where I poorly review things, and nobody really watches. So, I just finished reading Mr. Miracle, Issue 1. This is a 12-part story from DC. Came out in, I believe, 2017, started. Still going on. I think they're on Issue 6 now. Well, I picked this up on kind of a whim. Somebody had offhandedly mentioned it, and they hated it. They said how bad it was. They were liars! This book was great! It's $3.99 of pure pure entertainment it is definitely a mature title but i think this is definitely an underrated book if you've heard any bad things about it it's because somebody told you lies to keep it to themselves or because they do not understand good material so the art style is this very pop art retro style that has all the little pixels and dots because that's how they used to print comics on newsprint and then it kind of switches between that and this more pencil rough line work and there's even like scenes where Oberon's talking and there's like a piece of tape over him and it's a very surreal kind of patchwork thing but it's it's real interesting because like we start off with Scott Free Mr. Miracle trying to kill himself and there's all these sections that come back around like there's the story about a kid in art in an art class drawing a picture well we hear that same story later two people beat the crap out of him saying the same thing stand then he gets hit knocked down he gets up and uh, orion beats him up the first time barda smacks him once the second time and orion's a bully because he's got an anger management issue and he even says I'm the son of Darkseid but he's technically the son of the All Father because Scott was the All Father's or the High Father's son and he traded with Darkseid as part of a peace accord years ago that's not really explained but it's also not super relevant you can kind of infer that so Barda and Scott were raised on Apocalypse by Granny Goodness and tortured effectively and Scott's the greatest escape artist ever and Barda's his wife she's really tall but that's that's okay well it's interesting because they intersperse these little black panels throughout because most of the pages have nine panels a lot of times one of those panels will say dark side is and it's the only thing on there there's even a full page one where that happens and there's some interesting little things curiosities like he mentions that barda's eyes aren't blue why are they brown and she says they've always been brown and then we have this interesting thing where he's on a like late night talk show but every time he looks at the tv it's like slightly out of focus and there's lines going through it like an old tv would one of the dial ones with the big tubes when, whenever he sees a tv they're always like those old ones that are just not getting the signal right or they're slightly out of focus they have an interesting conversation between him and godfrey who's the late night talk show host the guy asked him why he tried to kill himself and he says it was a trick i've been doing a lot of escapes lately but there's one thing no one's ever come back from and that's death no one escapes death and godfrey even says but did you really escape death so there's that that's really weird and interesting but we don't really know what it means but i think it's a clue for something that happens later down in the story arc but i'm not sure i have my suspicions and i don't know if they're correct or not because i actually haven't really read any of the other issues but i think that he's actually not in the real world i think he's in the some sort of matrix that's why he's talk. he's like hallucinating and talking to oberon about these gauntlets that Oberon picked up off a of Th Thangarian and that's where we see the tape over Oberon's face but Oberon's apparently dead uh died of cancer from smoking and Scott was the one that had to make the decision to pull the plug but then they're summoned back home by a mother box saying that um the high father's dead and they're getting called back uh, Orion's taken command yeah um it, that's kind of crazy because uh if the high father's dead and dark side supposedly has part of the anti-life equation or all of it then bad things are foot so they have to go through the boom tube and go home yeah i'm intrigued where this goes this was a very compelling issue very interesting i'm excited to see where issue two goes i've got first three issues right now i bought them all at the same time when i couldn't find any good marvel books to pick up at the comic shop i bought these instead and i'm gonna pick up the others as soon as i get a couple extra bucks but yeah so far this is fantastic that was a great first issue 
it's it's a story it's not an action issue so the book looks like it's gonna be like a long novel it, it's not an action adventure shoot 'em up which is fine mr miracle is a fascinating character i've always liked him i thought his outfit was really cool too so yeah i'm intrigued to see issue two i would definitely recommend this one say so go out and pick it up if you can i know they did several prints with different covers and all that so there should be a copy floating around at your local comic shop or buy it online I recommend going to support your local comic shop if you get if you can. So yeah, definitely pick this one up. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I hope you like it as much as I did because I thought it was fantastic. The art style really isn't my thing most of the time, but it, it really did work very well for this one. But that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel, and hopefully we'll see you on the next episode. Hey everyone and welcome to another comic review done badly. <laughs> Today we're looking at Mr. Miracle issue 2. This is a, proving to be a very intriguing book. Tom King is the writer. I'd have to say I'm, I'm not a huge fan of his Batman right now. Read a couple issues and I'm not super impressed. But I'm going to give him a pass because this is great. This is a real interesting book. Issue 2 held up just as good as issue 1. In this one, we've got Mr. Miracle on some sort of beach, killing some parademons. Orion is sending him all over the place. He's The first like four pages are just him running from combat scene to combat scene, fighting these parademons, and he looks burnt out. There's a scene where he's bent over, tired looking, before picking up a sword and going in to slaughter more parademons. When he gets back, his, him and Barda are exhausted looking. They can't figure out how the showers work there, and she complains about her height as usual. And then they're have to go see Orion who's now the High Father <laughs> and there's a great scene where they're having the formal exchange Orion is just such a jerk and Light Ray has to remind them that they're now required to kneel and Barda has to make Scott kneel and he clearly is being dragged down by his wife you know Orion is pleased and obviously the power is going to his head yeah but their mission now instead of moving forces over because they've lost 250,000 troops which is just mind-boggling their new objective is to go after Granny Goodness and finish her off and there's a plan in motion but the night before scott still got the bandages on his arms by the way from his suicide attempt last issue the night before uh, metron shows up and scott thinks he's dreaming and he tries to wake barda up to see if she can see him too and metron just says you're not to know the face of god and he keeps repeating that barda mumbles something about it's late tell him we have to be up early <laughs> go away and Scott and Barda have a slight exchange about talking about their mission and Granny Goodness. And I think he's showing some hesitation. So they use a boom tube from their mother box to pop over to see Granny. And she greets them and they have Jello together. She made Jello, which is really weird that on an alien planet you can get Jello. And Granny's torturing a guy named Stormforge who's one of the other gods. They, they did say some of the new gods had died in the battle, but they weren't specific about who. So they have a nice jello meal with Granny before going around and doing like the old family circus with the dashes following Billy around. They do that with these guys, but it says fight, fight, choke, run, kick, kick, and the, it's all misspelled and cheeky and a little surreal. And then Granny talks to Scott and says, come in, I, I want to talk to you in private. We don't know who's listening. And then we get one panel that says Dark Side is is and she tries to explain something to him that that he's being set up that orion said they barda and scott might try to break the truce and that he wanted granny to kill scott granny had just stunned barda so it's hard to know if what she's saying is true or not but she claims she's the one that told the high father that dark side has the anti-life equation and then she t she says that dark side can only be killed by his son and she's implying that it's scott but scott's not Darkseid's biological son. There was the baby exchange where Orion was given to High Father because Orion is actually Darkseid's son, and Scott was given to Darkseid. And then you know Barda gets up and finishes the mission. That that's where this issue ends. And it seems like a lot didn't happen, but a lot did happen, and a lot of it is visual. And you're only going to see a few panels on here, but I highly recommend this series. It is proving to be incredibly interesting, and I think it has the potential, if they don't botch the ending, 
it's got the potential to be a classic like watchman level classic at least in my opinion so i highly recommend if you are not reading mr miracle get caught up because these issues are interesting and the storytelling is really well done for one and it's all the small panels really kind of ties it together and it gives it this real nuanced feel the art is actually pretty cool it, it took me a little bit to kind of adapt to it i wasn't real sure about last issue but you know what it, it's really grown on me it's very stylistic and i don't always necessarily love it but it definitely functions for the story and i never really liked orion so i, I have no problem hating him he's a very unlikable person in the comics so overall a uh, great issue i'm looking forward to reading number three which hopefully will be up later this week but wow what an amazing book this i cannot recommend this enough i really hope the payoff works because if it doesn't they will have ruined the potential for having an amazing classic that tom king could really put under his belt and i have to say this is way better than his batman work at least from what i've seen of it this is probably one of my favorite books out right now and it's i'm only two issues in and i'm gonna go out and get the rest of them but i've got issue three sitting here so hopefully i'll get that one done sometime this week and that'll be up in the meantime that'll do it for this episode as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel and we hope to see you on the next episode Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. Today we are looking at Mr. Miracle Issue 3. This starts out with Orion digging up the body of Granny Goodness and decapitating it. It's a long section where we, Mr. Miracle is doing a captioned voiceover describing this really horrific World War II story that really needs to be read. I'm not going to retell it. It's pretty disturbing. And again, we get the same type of intro where it's like an old-time announcer describing what's going on. And then we've got our credits. This is written by Tom King with Mitch Jared's pencils, inks, colors, and variant cover. Clayton Cowles did lettering, and Nick Denton did uh, the regular cover. And Mr. Miracle was, of course, created by Jack Kirby. Well, then Scott gets out of bed because he can't sleep. Bart is sound asleep, and he takes a pill and drinks a glass of milk, and boom, who should show up but Forager, who's uh, one of the insect people that work with the new gods on New Genesis. Well, he tells them this awful story about how six and a half million of the bugs have died, and... Now that Orion's talking about invading Apocalypse, he expects that number to triple. So they sent their queen to have words with Orion because Orion is sending the bugs in first and they're getting slaughtered. He doesn't think that's fair because the new gods are basically using them as cannon fodder. And so they sent the queen in. He had her executed for treason. So Orion murdered the queen of these people because she disagreed with him and questioned his judgment. And they say that the bugs will follow Scott because they trust him. He treats the bugs more like actual beings. He has respect for other life forms where Orion doesn't. Light Ray shows up through a boom tube, calls out Forager's name, and then murders him right on the spot on the orders of the high father and scott just kind of sits there doesn't seem to know doesn't really seem to phase him i don't think he knows what to do and he's told that the bug was specifically instructed not to speak to him and he he asks if it was true and L light ray doesn't answer him so he goes back to bed tries to talk to barda nothing she's sound asleep so the next day he has a show to do and he has to escape from a box before it hits the ground he escapes but they don't show him doing the reveal which i find kind of odd because you just see the box crashing as if this was like a memory or something then he's trying to talk to barda at, at lunchtime and she said tells him that you know they're getting called back early their uh leave time is cut short and they have to go get their armies ready and scott starts to say that he doesn't really know what's real anymore and he's questioning what's going on and she tells him that she's real and then some kid comes up some random kid comes up and gets a selfie with him i'm so sick of seeing selfies in comics I really am it's so dumb and everybody makes the same stupid faces in these it's ridiculous anyway then we got funky flashman in announcing mr miracle at the at the high father's chambers and orion is standing there staring out the window and scott goes in to talk to him and tries to explain what's happening but he's not doing it really well starts talking about the anti-life equation and orion seems to just be uh, the usual jerk that he is and says have you seen the face of god which is what metron said to him last issue well then orion proceeds to beat the crap out of him and say that he has seen the face of god and then he takes his helmet off and says that he is the face of god he says this is the face of god then the visuals start to get all blurry like uh, an old time tv 
you know, with different signals getting crossed and it gets all fuzzy and it kind of fades out, but it has that same phasing out that you get with the the intro where Orion's face at one point gets very distorted, but you get that same exit, like overly dramatic, um, like the 1960s Batman announcer. Pretty crazy. So we're getting a little closer to figuring out that Orion is completely bonkers, but the, the larger thing at play here seems to be starting to manifest about the anti-life equation and somehow Mr. Miracle is involved in that or this is some kind of elaborate trap. I'm, I'm super intrigued to see where this is going. Because I really think this is really well written. I've had criticisms of Tom King on Batman and probably will again. But this is great. I cannot recommend this book enough. As long as the payoff is good, I think this will be a classic. Possibly on par with Watchmen. But if they stumble somewhere along the way, it could really turn into total crap. Very easily. But so far, I am really, really in love with the book. I think this is a fantastic book. I'm really liking the art style more and more. I don't like the cover on this one too much. The cover version I've got is by Nick Darrington. And I don't particularly like that. That art style it reminds me of the book series the boys that garth Ennis wrote I, I, he might have been an artist on there i'm not sure but i didn't particularly care for that style and this reminds me of that type of art and i didn't particularly care for it orion's helmet looks pretty cool but i, I don't know it just didn't work for me otherwise go get this book get caught up it's great i'm gonna go pick up issues four five and six probably this weekend and i'm looking forward to reading them and doing a review on them obviously so that'll do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel be sure to hit like share subscribe we hope to see you on the next episode Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. Today we're looking at Mr. Miracle Issue 4. Now this is part of the 12-issue maxi-series from DC. And we pick up shortly after we left off in the previous issue. Scott has been beaten by Orion pretty severely. And Bart is at his bedside and she's really upset and there's a knock at the door. She is even less happy about this visitor because it's Light Ray. He has come to tell her that it is now declared that General Free is considered an agent of dark side and an enemy of new genesis barta slaps him scott is given the choice of either having an execution or a trial which of course is a sham trial scott chooses trial and barta tells light ray to get out of the house light ray says well where do you want to have it he says well, let's just do it here. He's expecting a delivery of some equipment, and he doesn't want to just sit in by the door. So Light Ray says something else kind of smart alecky about a trial here, and says thank you. And Barda gives him a couple of quick punches. He calls her a name, and she hits him again. And she is very unhappy. But we get this same thing with the TV set with the wavy lines. And it happens throughout the issue. It's not just the TV anymore. Now it's bleeding into actual conversations. Whereas every other time it had been limited to just the television set. But it's this blurring of reality. It's really interesting. Well, Mr. Miracle has an act to perform where a barrel gets hit by a train. He, of course, escapes. But the act is somehow tied into the way this whole thing is playing out like the whole story is actually just an escape act so i think it's a metaphor within the story anyway of course orion shows up with an entourage he's got light ray and a security guy it looks like they, they got a veggie tray which actually plays into some funny jokes mr miracle has to sit on a chair while orion declares himself as the high father he gets to decide who is the prosecutor the defendant and the, or the defense attorney and the judge and he decides he's all three because that is his privilege and to deny that would be to deny the wisdom of the high father so he says shall we begin and mr miracle gets up and has a carrot because he's a smart aleck without <laughs> too much problem they go into the trial and high father extracts a lot of information out of him and it's actually really telling important information about what scott believes and it, as he answers a couple times we get that blurred out tv out of focus image and it happens several times throughout but only during critical questions it's really interesting how that's done of course orion's being a total jerk about the whole thing 
And Scott, you know, he's not letting Scott put any nuance into his answers. And so either true or false. There can be no I don't knows, no well that depends. It's always very black and white. And of course that is not always reality, but Orion's jerk. So Orion eventually makes him mad enough that Scott kind of snaps. Scott's a little unhinged. Orion asks him if he is the anti-life equation, true or false. And I don't think Scott knows. He's really confused by something. There's a lot going on that you know we're not really seeing we're just seeing that scott's pretty unstable well he hits orion really hard like there's a look of fear in orion's face and barda has to comfort scott and basically keep him from attacking him and orion even's like oh man and then he just pronounces that scott is in fact guilty and he should present himself in three days to be executed we close the issue out with barda holding scott comforting him and throughout the issue there's only one panel where it says dark side is so that's early on in the book too so poor scott is in some dire situation but this was a very good issue it really kind of pulls a lot of information out of scott he doesn't know his own real name scott free is just what granny goodness used to call him and now that the real high father is dead he'll never know his true birth name that is upsetting obviously to him as is a lot of the other things he doesn't seem to know what to do and he's he seems like he's very lost he hates his job he hates new genesis he hates apocalypse he hates pretty much everything so it, it's a very telling issue and i think this is a very pivotal point in the series i've got to read issue five next it, it's it's gonna bother me if i don't i'm hoping to have that one up later this week or early next week got a lot of other comics to read but this continued to be great tom king did a really good job writing it uh mitch gerard's ink pencils inks colors and variant cover did a good job clayton cowles letters great job all around a fun book continues to be an incredibly good series and i'm really excited to read issue five but that'll do it for this episode as always thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel if you get a chance to go out and buy mr miracle after you hit like and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you on the next episode thanks for listening Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. Today we're looking at Mr. Miracle issue 5. They were raised in the hellfire pits of Apocalypse and then they fell in love. So we're following Barda and Scott Free as they travel around Los Angeles, kind of living out his last day. They have some slight adventures and she ties Scott up in the Jesus Christ pose and then they have sex and that goes on for an uncomfortable amount of time. They go out to visit Oberon Kurtzberg's grave and Scott says he's going to see him soon. It's very depressing. The issue starts with the two of them hanging out in front of what looks like Man's Chinese Theater. Scott's putting his hands in some cement as uh, on the on the walk of fame and he says just say the word i'll stay just say stay i'll fight i'll go to war i'll kill orion i swear and she says i can't do that and of course when they're leaving they run into funky flashman pr agent of the gods and he's an old 70s character it was really annoying funky flashman tells scott and barda that they are going to market this as a suicide as opposed to an execution because mr miracle is so popular on earth and the new gods need Earth to be an ally to them. And executing Scott would be turning the public against them. So they're going to use it as the opportunity to turn it into a publicity stunt and say that he committed suicide. He's already tried it once and it's not a big deal. So Barda is clearly annoyed by this, but they get rid of him and they move on with their day. They visit Oberon's grave. They go out to eat at Scott's favorite restaurant. And they get stuck in traffic. They go to an amusement park where Scott gets her a, a big stuffed wonder woman doll they gaze into a pond which apparently smells like urine and they watch the sunset then they drive up to look over the valley to see the stars and and the lights of los angeles but it's not quite what he had hoped for he hoped there would be some meaning there and there isn't and over the course of the issue both of them have cried it's a real downer episode barda kind of breaks down in their room he tries to comfort her in a wordless exchange that is really well done and again they make love shortly after that while they're laying there in bed we get a dark side is panel and then a funky flashman shows up with a couple of what look like royal guards and they're going to escort scott down to a press conference 
where he will explain what's happening to the public with their spin. And Scott's kind of resigned to it. His head's down, you know, eyes narrowed the entire time. And then a zap rolls out and kills one of the guards. And then we see a baton hitting the other guard, beating him to death. Funky Flashman is next. And we end the issue with Varda saying, while buck naked and covered in blood, stay. This was a very powerful issue. It really did justice to the medium. There was a lot of good use of silence as well as the communication of people that are in a situation where one of them is about to die. And it was really well done. It was tastefully handled. There was a little bit of humor in there, like is normal with situations like this. And I was immensely impressed with the issue. I don't normally like Tom King, but this Mr. Miracle series has been phenomenal if you haven't been reading this go get it get caught up i know they've done at least three printings of the first issue it should be too hard to find one of those printings at a reasonable price they may have even done further printing since then but this story continues to get better and better and slowly events are proceeding but it is so well written it's not an action book but it is one of the better books that i've read this year hands down and like i said if before in one of the other episodes if this has the payoff that they've been building toward and it makes logical sense this could easily be a classic so if you haven't been reading this you're missing out uh please give it a shot at least pick up one issue uh preferably the first issue to start there and try and catch up because i know issue six is out and i think issue seven is due to drop here shortly so if you get a chance please pick up the first issue see what you think i know it won't be for everyone but it is a very good story and it's very well done i have been enjoying it quite a bit so i'll give it a very high recommendation for this book but that'll do it for this episode as always thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel and we hope to see you on the next episode Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Mr. Miracle, Issue 6. I wanted to get caught up on this series, and I thought we'll go over these over the next few days. Alright, so this issue is effectively just Mr. Miracle and Barda getting through some obstacles to get to Orion. And the obstacles are, of course, tons of traps and guards that they have to fight, and a dragon that lives under the water. Now, unfortunately, I think this is where it's losing the plot. I thought we were building up to something over a period of time but this was just a meandering mess the plot was incredibly straightforward and everything that happened really happened after the staple and could have been summed up in about three pages it could have been something much much more useful instead there's a lot of nonsense talk about downsizing in the kitchen it was almost an obnoxious issue some of the visuals were really good i thought the art was fine but as far as the plot goes i think they're really losing it here it was to the the point where I was really annoyed that it was a four dollar book the story was really just a two or three page thing that could have been wrapped up way sooner than this and this just dragged on and on the way that they are talking makes them sound like millennial hipsters which I hate saying like the clothes and the things and you could just hear the valley girl voice and Barda and she doesn't talk like that so I thought this was a complete waste of an issue I was actually really disappointed the art was pretty good though it's very consistent with the style of art but the story itself was massive massive letdown this was written by tom king with pencils inks colors and variant cover by mitch gerards clayton cowles on letters nick darrington on cover maggie howell assistant editor molly mahan associate editor and jamie s rich editor now i'm hoping that next issue kind of brings it back around so we'll see how that goes i should have that one posted tomorrow and i really hope that it starts getting back on track because it, now it just feels like there's stretching it out and dragging it out and i was real impressed overall with the previous issues but this was just a meandering mess i don't know maybe he didn't know where to go with the storyline or maybe he doesn't know how to end it or make it 12 issues but this was a completely unnecessary issue except for two pages and that's incredibly disappointing i don't think you need this one to enjoy this series up to this point hopefully it doesn't keep devolving like this because this could be a classic i just hope that it's not going to be more of this nonsense but that's just my take on it as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future episodes and we hope to see you on the next one
Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Mr. Miracle issue 7. This is part of a 12 part maxi series from DC Comics. This is written by Tom King. Pencils, inks, colors, and variant cover by Mitch Gerards. Clayton Cowell's letter. Nick Darrington cover. Brittany Holzer, associate editor. Jamie Rich, editor. So I have a feeling that this book was slipped past the editor based on the sales of the first several issues. Because this book is stupid. This was a terrible issue. I'm going to tell you that right now. Barda is giving birth. We've jumped ahead several months, obviously. There's no explanation as to what happened in between the events of last issue and the events of this issue. And that's a massive jump because somebody died last issue and it was a pivotal character in the story. So it doesn't explain why these people would not be in more heavily involved in the events going on on New Genesis or Apocalypse. So while she's giving giving birth barda requests that these other people be present and there's some of like sort of family they show up and there's a truce because they're at a hospital and barda's giving birth but there's some complications with the pregnancy and one of the women that showed up gives scott uh, this knife the farron knife that can kill gods and he uses it and has to give it back and she's like oh i'm gonna kill you with it and he's like okay doo -doo -doo. That, that was pretty much the whole issue there there's, there's a baby. That was it. That was the entire plot of the book was giving birth. That took 20 some pages to happen and a lot of standing around talking. Yep, this was a soap opera. This was boring. This was not a comic book. This was a telenovela. No, no, telenovelas are written better. This was just a boring waste of time. It, it wasn't building up to anything. The whole series is dragging now after issue five. I was with them through the first five issues. Last issue was dumb. This issue was just boring and extra special dumb because it all could have been summed up in four or five pages oh you want to drag it out okay how about eight i don't think he knows where he's going with this it feels like the last season of the tv show lost where you thought they were gonna have some big reveal and no it was just this slap together thing that being said i would not recommend this issue i'm starting to wonder if the rest of the series is worth it i've been putting off reading these because last issue was so incredibly boring and this issue was so much more boring so i'm a little concerned that the series is going to tank and that anything that they seem to be doing in the first five issues was really just a clever illusion and they just tricked us into thinking there was some greater story when really it was just tom king doesn't know how to finish a story so i'm a little disillusioned with this series and uh, i'm not gonna recommend this issue if you really like the series good for you but personally i would have stopped at issue five and just wrote my own ending and it probably would taken about two pages so i don't know if this series is actually going anywhere or if tom king just sort of puts words on paper and they magically get transformed into a comic book by some bizarre act of the universe but i'm not recommending this one i think this was really a waste of time and of my four dollars that being said that's just my take on it as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Mr. Miracle issue 8. This is from the 2017 series, maxi series of course, 12 issues. And this is written by Tom King, pencils, inks, colors, and variant cover by Mitch Gerards, Clayton Cowles on letters, Nick Darrington on cover, Brittany Holzer was associate editor, Jamie Rich editor. Now we've got Scott taking care of the baby. He's drinking out of a cup that says I am God. That's subtle and for some reason funky flashman's there i thought barda killed him but i guess not whatever i think that's supposed to mean something but i don't know and we are juxtaposed between that storyline of scott taking care of the baby and then him in the war and the war seems to be dragging on it looks like they're on apocalypse fighting and the war drags on for quite some time because the kid goes from being a tiny tiny baby to being a almost toddler age where he's starting to walk things like that so good span of several months at least have passed i'm not sure how quickly new gods age but here we are so we've got this interesting war story going and when they 
do these scenes with Funky and Scott. Those are really annoying. So it's it's this really irritating cross between. We even see Scott talking on through the mother box like it's a cell phone, which is a little cheesy. Whenever he's talking to Barda, he sounds like a typical millennial. He starts sentences with like way too often when it's inappropriate and there's no comparison. And Funky is just irritating in the whole thing. But the, the scenes of war are actually really well done and fairly graphic. They show Light Ray killing a baby parademon, which is pretty messed up. And we see some trials and tribulations of parenting. But it's it's just such a mixed bag because all the parenting scenes are really kind of ham-fisted. Like, I don't know if Tom King has kids, but it doesn't really seem like he does from the way this is written. And there's a lot of, like, downtime randomly inserted. Like, he's talking to Barda when he should be really at the palace leading the military. And the, Scott and Barda just sort of sit around and have conversations at home and he's now the high father so he should be issuing commands being available to his men that sort of thing instead it's just kind of him loafing around the house or, or him and Barta taking turns watching the kid while the other one's off to war and it comes off as a little confusing at times you don't get a real sense of time except when you're seeing the kid so you don't know exactly how much time is progressing he does mention they're going to go to war in a different area in the fall what is this the middle ages you're a high tech society you don't have to wait on the the weather does apocalypse even have weather patterns so i thought that was a little irritating overall it was better than the last couple issues but it's only a minor improvement elements of it were really well done the war sequences were good but too much of this issue is still filler and it feels very forced now i'm hoping that this is going somewhere but it's really not feeling like it the last two issues were effectively wasted and this issue about half of it is kind of filler at least that's how it feels so i'm not gonna recommend this but i'm not gonna say don't buy it either because it was just so middle of the road it's very very middle story i really think that this last three issues definitely could have been condensed down into one issue maybe an issue and a half so that being said i'm still very torn on this miniseries it's gone downhill pretty considerably and this looks like a slight bump in the right direction but i can't guarantee it so i'm not gonna recommend this until i read more of the series it was better than last issue but not as good as the first couple of issues and that's just my take on it as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video hit the like button and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at Mr. Miracle, issue 9. This is from the 2017 Macro series. Now, this issue starts with negotiations between Calabac and Mr. Miracle. Calabac, of course, being Darkseid's son. And things are just kind of going along. This is written by Tom King. Pencils, inks, colors, and variant cover by Mitch Gerards. Clayton Cowles, letterer. Nick Darrington, cover. Brittany Holtz, her associate editor. Jay Jamie Rich, editor. Now there's an inordinate amount of time spent on the subject of urination. There's an entire page where Scott is walking down the hall with someone and then an entire page of them peeing. And there's most of a page of somebody's spittle falling down and splatting on somebody's head. Well, actually it's closer to two pages. So out of your 24 page comic, there's about three pages dealing with bodily fluids. And there's a lot of unnecessary wasted time like Calabac putting glasses on that takes three panels and then there's three panels or four panels of them just sitting there watching him there's a lot of wasted space in this and then we get a lot more of the usual forced swearing because it you know when you have to substitute a bunch of pound signs and dollar signs in for naughty words that really adds to the book good job lazy writing and we see a lot of interactions between Scott and Barda as they discuss things that are going going on have little flashbacks about being back on apocalypse the negotiation part really is actually fairly interesting but everything else is pretty boring again like last issue there's some good parts and some very dumb parts and almost everything scott says when he's alone with barda could end in a question mark because it's got kind of that valley girl twitter speak that 
that is, I guess, something millennials do. I'm not sure. It's really annoying. It comes off as very artificial. It's not really how people talk to each other. So I don't particularly care for that. And there's an entire page where they're naked in front of a mirror and they see themselves as burnt, distorted monsters. I, okay. There's just a lot of junk filler in here. The interesting part is like the last three pages or two pages, I guess. And that's really all there is to it. There's a little bit of a twist ending where Darkseid says what he wants and overrules Calabac despite the previous arrangements and this week-long process of them setting things up. But really, Mr. Miracle looks incredibly weak in this issue. It's very lazy as far as the writing goes because it could have been a much shorter issue with a lot more of the interesting parts and a lot less of the fluff. The fluffy parts with him talking to Barda almost entirely could be cut out. It's a bunch of nonsense, boring crap. This book is really, really going nowhere very quickly. And uh, I'm real frustrated that I've already bought the 10 issues and only about five of them were actually good and felt like they were going somewhere. The rest is just sort of, most of it's a waste of time. And this issue was, I think, not worth the money. This series had a potential to be a masterpiece, but I think it's just... Just being stretched out for trade paperback and sales purposes and that I find that insulting this should have been wrapped up by now because most of what we're seeing for the last three to four issues is almost entirely garbage or filler and applies almost nothing to furthering the story along and it's very frustrating so I've got issue 10 here unfortunately this is on my pull list so I will be getting the last two issues because I've waited too long to get around to reading these I'm gonna read issue 10 and hopefully get that up before for issue 11 comes out and then we'll get into that one but i'm not gonna recommend this one i think you could realistically just read the last two pages and get the gist of what happened here but that's just my take on it as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Mr. Miracle issue 10. This is from the 2017 macro series, 12 issues of course, from DC Comics. Now on the cover you see Darkseid. He's not in this issue at all. No, instead it's a bunch of nonsensical scenes interstrung to display Mr. Miracle's concern about the sacrifice that he might have to make to Darkseid to stop the war. Although Mr. Miracle's beard is getting longer, I'm the one thinking that time is passing very very slowly i'm left wondering if tom king has a point here so tom king is the writer mitch gerard's pencils inks colors and variant cover clayton cowell's letterer nick darrington cover Brittany holds her associate editor jamie rich editor i like the cover it's a really good shot of dark side it's cool with the black and white look with the red eyes i like that i do like the interior art but the story is so stupid it's gotten so pointless like it's starts off with Mr. Miracle out drinking with Ted Cord and Booster Gold and we only see them for a little bit but there's an entire page of somebody's drinking glass. What a waste of time. Uh, the only scene in here that I really thought was poignant in any way was the scene where Scott's in the shower and Bart is talking to him from off panel and he's breaking down effectively because of the decision he has to make. Otherwise, most of this issue is a gigantic waste of paper and time. Barta spends most of her time playing with her mother box like it's a cell phone, and Scott's pining over the decisions he has to make. And it's dragged out into yet another issue of him meandering around, pining, when the point could have been made much, much quicker and more effectively by that shower sequence where he's breaking down after talking to the guys about having to make this decision. Well, we already know that the decision was gonna have to be made this could have been summed up in two pages tops and it probably would have been much more effective instead it's dragged out into this weird like boring adult film on like hallmark channel where we gotta over explain and deconstruct his feelings like no this is really really boring get to the point nothing happens in this issue we find out what his decision is yes but I don't really count that because we all knew kind of what his decision had to be. 
Realistically, there were three pages in this entire thing that were of any use. Once again, they're dragging out a story way too long. Some editor needs to rein Tom King in and save him from himself. He's got interesting story ideas, but he takes it to an entirely overblown soap opera level that it becomes incredibly stagnant and boring and navel-gazing. I don't care about 90% of this book. It was a complete waste of time. The art was good, but that doesn't justify me spending $4 on this. If this book had been four issues shorter, it probably could have been a, a masterpiece, but Tom King is just dragging it out to get 12 issues in so you buy all 12 and then you buy the trade. I'm not going to do that. This issue was a complete waste of my time. The three pages in this issue could have been glued into the back of last issue and cut out a bunch of junk out of that one. And the two issues before that could have been completely cut from the series. I'm not seeing the purpose in buying all these issues with so much fluff and filler. It's just not worth my time and money. This is a um, very insulting. Just read the synopsis on Wikipedia. It'll be a lot easier and you'll get the same effect because there's really only two, maybe three pages that are any good in here for plot. Otherwise, it's just an art book. Buy it out of a dollar box. Don't pay four bucks for this. Don't pay anywhere near that. I am not recommending this. This was an insult to readers and consumers. That's just my take on it. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Mr. Miracle issue 11. This is from the 2017 miniseries written by Tom King, Mitch Gerard's on pencils, inks, colors, and variant cover, Clayton Cowell's letterer, Nick Darrington did the regular cover, Brittany Holes, her associate editor, Jamie Rich, editor. So we finally get somewhere that it's been dragging for a while, but they confront Darkseid and they offer to exchange Jacob in order to end the war. And of course it's it's a trick and they have to try and defeat Darkseid through various shenanigans. I'm not going to get too far into it. And it ends in a very weird way that leads into kind of what's going on. It mentions a crisis, but I'm not going to get too into it. Like I said, this was a mixed bag issue. It was, again, dragged way out. It could have been condensed heavily down to probably five pages of actual good material. Like, we get a whole page of Darkseid eating carrots. It's the stupid stupidest thing I've ever seen and there's this like hipster TV dialogue that people in real life don't talk like this like they have these weird conversations between Barda and Mr. Miracle in front of Darkseid and then Desaad that have nothing to do with anything they're just filler talk that doesn't happen in real life this is like an antisocial person's idea of how people interact and the whole thing with the kid grabbing Darkseid's nose for like an entire page is stupid there's so many problems I have have with this that it outweighs the good parts the art was great i really like the art style i thought it really works for the book dark side looks really imposing how tough dark side is is really impressive he barely talks through the whole thing and that actually works really well in the book but scott free doesn't shut up and him and barda interact in this really annoying tv sitcom way it's very very irritating and it, it really didn't feel like they did this in the beginning of the book but they do it a lot now and there's a lot of forced swearing, which of course is blocked out by the Groflix symbols. You know, you've got lots of percentage signs and ampersands in there. Oh, it's dumb because it really detracts from the story. Just substitute a different word in there if you're going to use it at all. Don't have this symbol stuff. We all know the word. Just use it or don't. This is a sign of bad writing to me. And it's really annoying and frustrating. But there are some interesting twists and turns in here that I thought were pretty solid and pretty interesting interesting the way the issue ended was really well done i just think that there's a lot of laziness here that could have been avoided by shortening the series and the editors doing their jobs a little more tightly i don't like this dragging out for the trades to begin with and this is really heavily padded with a lot of unnecessary scenes that take away from the power of the scene overall the whole thing with dark side eating carrots for an entire page could have been squeezed down to make it more dramatic maybe in half the space so i was really annoyed with that so overall it was a decent issue compared to issues like 
seven and eight but overall it was still just kind of mediocre and it had the potential to be really good this series has just been about four or five issues too long and that's really what's hurting it for me so i'm going to recommend this if you find it in the discount bin don't pay cover price or more for it it's just not worth it it's just overall a disappointment but that's just my opinion as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world hello and welcome to another bad comic review this time we're looking at mr miracle issue 12 of 12 the last installment of this bizarre bizarre book by Tom King writer, Mitch Gerard's pencils, inks, colors, and variant cover, Clayton Cowles letterer, Nick Darrington cover, Brittany Holzer associate editor, Jamie S. Rich editor. Okay, so if you ever want to know what it's like to be a superhero with possibly mental illness, this is the issue for you. There's very little that actually happens. We see Barda and Scott talking endlessly about random stuff. We learn about how their remote control was put in the dishwasher by the baby and it got washed and we learn that they have an appointment they have to keep and funky is late because he seems to tend to be late and scott talks to what are some sort of digital ghosts they have this like distortion about them like a bad tv signal and he sees dark side he sees granny goodness etc etc and we learn that barda's pregnant with a baby for the second time and they talk about how that affects them like they're gonna have to get a bigger condo their son won't remember all the time when he wasn't there when the the new baby wasn't there and then scott sees the high father and punches out the ghost and we learn that he may be in some kind of matrix thing and then it abruptly ends it just ends there's there's a scene with him and barda and he, he's rambling on the couch and then the story just sort of ends and it says this miniseries is concluded uh, but there is a successor one coming and i'm not gonna buy that because if tom king is writing it it's gonna be more of the same pointless drivel it doesn't even feel like this was a conclusion it literally feels like it's missing the last couple pages that ex really go into detail about explaining it they were trying to be all meta and deep and philosophical and they completely missed the ball this again goes to my theory that tom king does not understand superheroes or the storytelling medium of comic books and i find that incredibly frustrating to deal with because every issue that i read by him seems to be some kind of either deconstruction of a superhero or working through his own personal issues typically with women from what i can tell i don't know what kind of deep-seated mommy issues he's got but he really needs to go to therapy and write good comic books that have less to do with his weird mom issues than whatever this trash is this was garbage it's not worth the five bucks i feel cheated for having purchased it as i have for the last several issues the first four or five issues really felt like they were going somewhere there was something going to be revealed or there there's some deeper narrative and they just kind of phoned it in at the end and the ending of last issue showed uh, the heroes of dc you know batman superman etc and then they just kind of ignore that in this issue it's briefly referenced that he didn't want to go to that universe apparently scott just chooses to stay in the matrix or whatever it doesn't make any sense it's boring it's trite it's try hard philosophy for sophomores in college this is intellectually deep to a middle school I was really bored. The story went nowhere. It just sort of meanders around following people through their day. That is not a superhero book. That's Strangers in Paradise. That is a dozen other indie comics, not a DC book about Mr. Miracle. I was bored out of my mind and I regret having purchased this. I regret my decision to encourage other people to buy the first five issues. This series was a complete waste of time. It, it alluded to a buildup that never happened. Maybe I read into that. Maybe all those previous issues were just a meandering mess he had the chance to make a classic here if he had tried to be less intellectual about it and make it more fun and adventurous but he didn't it devolved into more bizarre relationship drama and interpersonal communication and it was boring it was incredibly boring for the last half of the the series so i'm not going to recommend this book i'm not going to recommend this miniseries save your money for a better book and hopefully dc will stop making 
taking this trash and stop giving Tom King more characters to ruin. Because he's got a long track record now, and I'm getting really frustrated with it. But that's just my take on it. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews. If you want to support us in other ways, share the video around. Patreon links and Teespring links are in the description and on the about page. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one.